Hello everybody, this is Gleb and right now I'm going to tell you about 5G bandwidth parts aspects. So first of all, I will give you the definition of bandwidth part. Then we will uh, talk about the possible reasons why 5G NR has bandwidth parts. Then I will uh, tell you about possible configurations, just examples, and uh, possible carrier aggregation aspects. Then we will talk about switching, activation, deactivation of bandwidth parts. And after that, a little bit about initial uh, bandwidth part aspects and a little bit about RF performance and user equipment power consumption. So let's get started. Okay, uh, so what is it bandwidth part in 5G? Uh, according to 3GPP specifications, Bandwidth part is a contagious number of common resource blocks with specific numerology for specific cell. Uh, by the way, if you want to know more about common resource blocks, physical resource blocks, virtual resource blocks, point A and other stuff, I made a video about this, so you can find it here. Okay, but in simple words, bandwidth part is a part of cell bandwidth with specific subcarrier spacing, yes, with specific numerology, and um, it is for some reasons, for some uh, spe specific cases. So basically, there are only two uh, main reasons why uh, such concept is used here. The first reason is to allow low complex with low power user equipment to camp on cell. Uh, because in previous generations, in 4G, in 3G, yes, in previous generations, uh, user equi equipment has to support uh, the whole cell bandwidth, yes, in order to um, work well to get services with network but in 5g we know that sometimes a cell bandwidth can be extremely broadened up to a few hundred megahertz so uh, this is not not so good for any devices because uh, some devices may relate it to internet of things smart metering yes uh, I mean, not every device uh, should have extremely broad uh, bandwidth. So, for that reason, uh, bandwidth part concept is used. Another reason is to use bandwidth part with different subcarrier spacing as a kind of a link adaptation mechanism, as a kind of a uh, quality of service on physical layer. Uh, that's why, because um, some vendors may call a bandwidth part feature as uh, run slicing. And actually, that's true, but it sounds marketing, but th that's true. Because uh, bandwidth parts allow us to use different subcarrier spacings. And um, it, of course, uh, influence greatly influence on scheduling mechanism, on uh, phase noise, on uh, other physical uh, parameters such as cell size, uh, signal strength. So this, is, um, this may be considered as a quality of service link adaptation for physical layer. So let's move to possible configurations. Okay, let's imagine that we uh, have cell with cell bandwidth 200 megahertz available. Um, and we have user equipment one, very expensive smartphone, uh, for example, which can support up to 200 megahertz. So it can use the whole bandwidth and it can be configured with the uh, bandwidth part to the whole bandwidth. User equipment 2, in my example, uh, can be configured maximum up to 100 MHz. So it can use either bandwidth part 0 
or bandwidth part one. User equipment three can um, work only with 50 megahertz band. So uh, we can see that these bandwidth parts are either very small or uh, too large for uh, that user equipment. But our user equipment can work in carrier aggregation mode with another cell, with another bandwidth part. Or it can be not carrier aggregation mode, but supplementary uplink or supplementary downlink mode. If you want to know more about supplementary uplink, downlink, you can find my video here. Okay, let's move on. So, um, at one time, a user can have only one active bandwidth part. Yes, only one active bandwidth part in connected mode only one so it means for each carrier only one here only one active bandwidth part and here it means that uh, pdsch pdcch uh, csirs uh, all data can be sent only within that uh, bandwidth part and actually the same for that carrier Yes, so um, in TDD mode, uh, bandwidth part would be shared uh, in time domain, so there will be just one bandwidth part. In FDD mode, let's imagine this is FDD, yes, this is uplink and this is downlink carrier. In FDD mode, there will be bandwidth part for uplink active and bandwidth part for uh, downlink. So, let's move to another questions. Okay, let's talk about uh, initial bandwidth parts, active bandwidth parts, switching. So, after decoding primary synchronization signal, secondary synchronization signal, after decoding SSB block, user equipment can read information and in a SIB1 block. C1 block contain information about initial bandwidth part for initial access. Uh, so this can be kind of um, subcarrier spacing for initial bandwidth part or frequency location such bandwidth part. After that, user equipment can go to uh, another active bandwidth part after RC connection or RC connection uh, reconfiguration. So, uh, this bandwidth part can be with different numerology or with the same numerology. Uh, if there is a special comment, DCI or RC message comment, can be a switching to another bandwidth part. Yes, for some purposes, for providing different uh, services, for example, or um, link adaptation. So DCI is faster. DCI is about 2 millisecond latency. RRC is about 10 milliseconds. So RRC can be used for uh, voice services, for switching between uh, bandwidth parts, yes. DCI, uh, DCI may be used for more required services, required to latency. Actually, you, you can find this uh, information in this specification. Uh, the next, for example, for the purpose of uh, power saving, uh, battery saving, uh, user equipment can be configured with default uh, bandwidth part fall back to default bandwidth part because uh, timer inactivity works as an example and of course while switching between uh, active bandwidth parts HIRQ retransmissions also should be uh, processed uh, in a right way uh, the same actually we can say about carrier aggregation um, where our uh, HRQ process should be reconfigured between two different carriers, between two different active bandwidth parts. So, 
As you can see, this is step for idle mode. This is uh, probably, we can say, cell uh, specific bandwidth part. And this is for connected mode, for user equipment specific uh, bandwidth parts. So now let's move to uh, another topic. And right now I want to share with you MediaTek study about using bandwidth part and power consumption for user equipment. You can find uh, the link in comment section below. So uh, from their studies, uh, in case of configuring bandwidth part 1 10 MHz and bandwidth part 2 100 MHz, this configuration versus the constant use for the whole bandwidth 100 MHz this configuration gives up to 50% power saving for battery. Uh, when it comes to voice services over a uh, new radio, it gives 40% 40, 40 more minutes using bandwidth part concept. Video traffic case, uh, it gives up to 30% power savings. So as you can see, bandwidth part is uh, as I said before, not only a link adaptation mechanism, quality of service, yes, but also a huge importance for uh, power savings. In addition, in addition to that, I want to say that uh, there is, can be a problem with interference between different bandwidth parts. Uh, it also may call in different sources as inter-numerology interference. So uh, it means that there are, should be some ap applied some techniques to mitigate such, such interference, uh, not only related to out-of-band emission, yes, like uh, usual, uh, like it was usually in previous generations, but also for in-band emissions. So this is a very important topic as well. And I've already made a video about inter-numerology interference and you can find this video here. So uh, this was uh, my short lesson about bandwidth part aspects in 5G and R. If you like this video, you can like and subscribe and uh, stand by with IoT Understanding channel. Goodbye.